So you're considering trading your winter coat for t-shirts, shorts, and flip-flops. And saying hello to the sugar sand of Clearwater Beach and St. Pete Beach, or maybe living that urban life in downtown Tampa. You've been dreaming of soaking up the sunshine and those turquoise waters and our eight and a half months of incredible weather, because that is what life is like living here in Tampa Bay. But is it for you? If you're one of those asking, should I move to Tampa Bay? In this video, we'll talk about that and the other questions you should ask yourself before making a decision. By the end of this video, you'll get answers to your questions about Tampa Bay. What's the cost of living? What are the best schools in the area? Is Tampa overcrowded? How bad is traffic in Tampa? What happens during hurricane season? And I'll even share some things you can't find on Google. If we've never met before, my name is Juan Alcala. I make videos that are all things Tampa Bay. What it's like to live here, what it's like to work here, what it's like to play here, the food, the dining, the outdoors, the beaches, and the sunshine. A little over five years ago, my wife Kate and I sold almost everything we own, packed up our family of five, moved 1,200 miles south here to the greater Tampa Bay area, and have been loving it ever since. I'm also a licensed real estate agent and a team leader here with the True Living Group, where we help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest here in the greater Tampa Bay area. But let's get into the questions that you should be asking before you decide to move to Tampa or anywhere else in that country for that matter. These questions come from your most frequently asked questions in the comments section and on our Zoom calls that we have with clients just like you who are considering relocating to the area. So this list is really built by you, the audience, and we're really excited to share videos like this. So keep those questions coming, keep those comments coming because they produce better content, the content that you wanna see. So I'm grateful to bring it. The first question I wanna tackle here is what are the good schools in Tampa Bay? Now, before you skip to the next section because you don't have kids or don't plan on having them or they're already off to college, I want to just put the pause on for one second before you do that. Don't leave yet. Knowing where good schools are is also very important to your real estate value. So if you care about that, then I would make sure that you watch this section also. But if you don't, feel free to skip. You can just go right below and move to the next section. Now, over the years, Tampa's had several schools named as some of the best public and charter schools in the country. One of my favorite websites to dig for stuff like this is niche.com, and they just released their 2024 uh, best ranking for schools and districts. Now, this gets determined through test scores, academic performance, and ratings from the students, the teachers, and parents. And it also includes data from the U.S. Department of Education. Pine View Elementary in Lando Lakes ranked first amongst public schools. It ranked 20th in the United States and graded out with an a rating. St. Petersburg Collegiate High School was also ranked amongst the top, coming in at 95th nationally. And is also voted the second best charter high school in the state of Florida. You get the State College of Florida Collegiate School in Bradenton, Plant High School and Steinbrenner School in Tampa, amongst others. For private schools, you got Berkeley Prep, IMG Academy, Tampa Prep, Carrollwood Day, and Academy at the Lakes. For colleges, you got University of South Florida, University of Tampa, Eckerd College, and Leo University, just to name a few. If you're a sports fan, you are gonna love Tampa Bay. Now, there are some fanatics here, right? If you've never been to a Buccaneers game, it's an experience, right? There's pirate flags everywhere. When they score a touchdown, they literally fire a cannon. And there's been a great team here for a while. A couple Super Bowl championships have been won. You know, recently we hosted a Super Bowl. Tom Brady was a quarterback. They were able to win. What a really cool experience to live through that here in the greater Tampa Bay area. And if you're a hockey fan, the Tampa Bay Lightning have consistently been a great club for almost a decade, won several championships, are consistently in the playoffs. You're gonna love what, what an experience you're able to have down in Amley Arena. The arena district right there is incredible. You got Water Street, you got um, uh, Channel Side right over there. You can go to Sparkman's Wharf. It's a really cool venue. So those are great opportunities. And then the, the Tampa Bay Rays. Now this ball club, historically speaking, has not been able to pack out the stadium. As a matter of fact, the, you can go to games and there'll be three to 5,000 people down there sometimes. It's super strange. But what what I found with baseball is like, you know, with so many people moving to the area, um, there's a lot of fans of other cities. And I completely understand that. I'm a Tigers fan. That's never going to change. I'm from Detroit. I'm not going to apologize for it. I love my Tigers and they're terrible. I don't know. You ever been to a Detroit Tigers game? Now, the Rays have been a good club or competitive for a while. And they just have a hard time drawing people. But because of that, it makes it really easy to go to a game. Now, we're right in the middle of a new stadium project that 
it. They're gonna redevelop the district. I think it's gonna bring a lot more people in, but I'm just sharing with you how it works. Now, another really cool thing in the area that most people don't know is we have a professional soccer club here called the Rowdies. And if you've never been to one of these events, it is something to behold. Um, let me tell you, soccer fans are passionate, y'all. I mean, wow, they really get into their sports. So lots to plug into. You know, if your kids are in sports, you've got soccer, of course, IMG Academy just to the south of Bradenton, which obviously elevates the game. Uh, World-class gymnastics here, um, baseball, football, flag football. Our kids are in sports for eight and a half months in the, uh, of the year outdoors, and then they come indoors during those summer months, except for swimming. Our kids swim year round, which is, it blows my mind because it's outdoors <laughs> um, where I'm from you know everything was closed by November and you were indoors only for sports so if you are a sports fan you are gonna love it here in Tampa Bay how bad is traffic in Tampa now this is a question that you absolutely have to have answered because if you commute to work or you have to take your kids certain places this is important to know now there's a couple things I want you to be aware of um, number one the lights here in Tampa take a long time and whether that's downtown or on the beach or up in Pasco County or or even down in Bradenton in Sarasota I just want you to be aware when you're at these stoplights if you're not from here it is literally going to feel like you have enough time to weave a blanket um, answer emails you, you can I mean maybe you could even get some work done I, I, I've said it some of these lights for literally three minutes and it feels like an eternity especially if you're from someplace that the road is fast paced people are moving along and I'm not saying people don't drive fast here we'll get into that in a minute but what I am saying is if you get caught at these lights and get in these weird cycles where you get caught at every single one man it makes your commute really really long now number two if you have to commute to Tampa for work or through Tampa for work I want you to be aware of this one area we call it malfunction Junction here in Tampa. This is where I-275 and I-4 come together. And y'all, this place was not designed to have 3.5 million people here, 3.4, whatever the new number is going to be when the census comes out. But let me tell you, it is a choke point. Now, there is um, development in the works to expand this and widen the the um, the junction there. But until that happens, it is a tough point. There Now, there's a few choke points I want you to be aware of. If you're coming from Pinellas County, which is Clearwater, St. Pete Beach area, crossing over the bay into Tampa, you go from four lanes essentially down to three lanes um, as you cross through there. As a matter of fact, it gets down as, as little as two. Um, going over to the airport from that uh, road, the Howard Franklin Bridge there, it, it goes down to one lane. So this is just a weird, awkward choke point. It definitely can be frustrating. I want you to be aware of that. If you have to cross over this bridge to go to Tampa in the morning, know that it's gonna take more time than if you look up at five o'clock um, on a Friday versus 11 o'clock on a Saturday morning. But you're gonna find heavy traffic coming into downtown Tampa pretty regular. Now, it does move fairly well, so I want to give you that perspective, but just know um, that this is the place where you're going to find a lot of that congestion. You've got the veteran highway that dumps into the airport and down on the 275. You've got um, 275 that goes up through Wesley Chapel back turning into 75, and then you've got that I-4 heading towards Orlando. Um, and, you know, as you head out towards Orlando, if you, if you have to commute, that also goes down to two lanes. So, these are natural choke points that just makes um, your commute a little bit challenging. So keep that in mind. If you do have to commute for work, you know, the northern suburbs aren't as bad. Um, and again, this is relative. If you live in areas like Chicago or Los Angeles or the Northeast where traffic is nuts, you're going to think that our traffic is no big deal. And you can read the comments and they'll tell you that, y'all. But if you're from rural Mississippi, it's going to feel overwhelming. Um, so just be prepared for that. What I would say, um, you know, from my perspective, I was in corporate business development for a long time. I traveled the country. What I would say is Tampa has reasonable traffic. Um, I expect uh, congestion during peak hours, you know, that, you know, 9 a.m. work hour, that uh, five to seven after work. These are normal things. Um, are they unbearable? I mean, it could be for some people. It just depends on what you're used to. Um, my focus with our clients is to never try to have you drive more than 30 or 35 minutes to work max. Um, a lot of people don't like to do that. Um, it just really depends on what your ideal lifestyle is. So keep that in mind because traffic can feel a little overbearing. I hope you're getting value out of today's video. If 
you have any questions, please feel free to put those in the comments section. That's how we make a lot of these videos, by listening to you. We wanna bring you the content that you wanna see. Also, if you're local, feel free to contribute to the conversation. Also, ask questions if you want. I personally respond to all legitimate questions down there. Also, all of our contact information is listed down below, including a link to my calendar so you can schedule the time that's most convenient for you. If you're interested in having a conversation about potentially relocating or investing here in the area, just know we got your back. All right, one of the top three frequently asked questions we get asked on our Zoom calls with people who are considering relocating to the area is what about hurricanes? And it is a fair question. It's one of the things that we were super concerned about because again, we moved from Detroit. We did not have hurricanes. That was not normal to us. And I went to every website I could find on Google, all the insurance companies and looked at risk models and I went way too far. And since moving here, what we've actually found is that it's not nearly as big of a concern as we made it in our mind before we made it. Now I wanna just take a step back. I'm not saying this isn't something that is real or dangerous or something that you should not take into consideration. I 100% am, I just told you we did the same thing. But in our experience after living here for five years, going, at, we're in our sixth summer right now, um, we've had a few really large run-ins with potential hurricanes, but we haven't had any direct hits. And as a matter of fact, Tampa has not had a direct hurricane shot since like 105 or 106 years ago. And listen, I'm not trying to play God or the weatherman. Let's just, hopefully that, that streak continues. Um, but what I will say is this, for some reason we have been spared quite often. And I'm not saying that it can't happen this season or or you shouldn't prepare as if we do, right? Uh, generator, you know, boarding up the windows. If you got hurricane impact windows, great. You don't have to do that. The house is made of block. It'll stand here and, and stand up to some pretty strong winds. Um, but the roof could fly. I mean, I, I'm just sharing with you guys realistic stuff. Our house is about 28 feet above sea level, so it should never flood. If it does, the entire globe has changed. That's reality. Um, but for our families, we've just made a decision that if it's going to hit like a category four, if that is the projection, then it, we're probably going to, to pack up and either go to Orlando or drive to Georgia or do something. Um, the nice thing is you do get a fair amount of notice. There are excellent people who follow these things. We've got a great meteorologist here in the area and we follow Mike's weather page. Mike is awesome. If you don't know about that guy, go check him out. He is like, he's, he's so He's very accurate, let me put it that way. And um, really down to earth and helps you understand things. So while it is a concern, here's what I know, right? I got a great strong house and I have insurance. If it gets real serious, we've made the decision we're gonna leave. I'm taking my family, I'm taking my dogs, and I'm taking my guitars because those things are important to me. Basically, everything else can be replaced or repaired. It would suck, I'm not gonna lie, but this is the reality. You've gotta make an exchange somewhere. One of the amazing pros we have is our incredible weather for eight months out of the year. You know, that four month stretch during the summer can get a little bit, um, interesting at times if you're not used to it but overall our experience has been great you know we've had run-ins with ian and adalia but you know tampa bay has has made it through it and uh thrive through those things so um do your homework do your diligence understand that um, it's a part of living here and you cannot uh, expect to not deal with it so if that isn't on the table for you i would reconsider and you know maybe consider areas like um, north carolina inland or south carolina inland maybe georgia because those those might resonate with you as well but tampa won't be for you if you can't um, entertain the idea of ever running into a hurricane <laughs> another question that lands in the top three is what about the cost of living in tampa Great question. Now this is, again, it's going to be relative compared to where you are. One of my favorite tools to use to try to figure out what the cost of living is, is the Forbes cost of living calculator. This thing is awesome. You can put in how much money you make where you currently live, and then you can put in a city where you're considering relocating to. Almost all the major metros are in there. So let's just say you're in Boston and Massachusetts and you're considering moving to the greater Tampa Bay area. You make $250,000 a year and you wanna to move to Tampa. You put in how much money you make and where you're going and it'll tell you how much money you need to earn in Tampa to keep the same lifestyle. What a really cool tool. Is it perfect? No. Is it gonna get you close? Absolutely. So that's a really cool tool to use. That's the first thing I would recommend to you, regardless of whether you're considering moving to Tampa or anywhere else in this country. I just think it's an awesome tool.
Now, housing is typically one of the biggest expenses you have no matter where you live, and it's gonna be the same here in Tampa. At the time of this recording, the median sales price for a home here in the greater Tampa Bay area is $447,000. Now, can you find things for less? Absolutely, you could find a mobile home for less than $100,000. That is absolutely possible. You can also spend over $20 million on luxury Gulf Front property or homes in Harbor Island or Davis Island, for an example. So so keep that in perspective. You can spend as much and you can also spend very little here. But when it comes to those averages and medians, that's where we're kind of looking at. You know, if you want a four bedroom, two and a half bath home, you can get a brand new one up in the suburbs like Wesley Chapel, San Antonio, you know, one of those homes for the low 400s, which is pretty impressive for a brand new home. The cost of ownership gets really, really low when you think about that. But you could also spend upwards of a million and a half in those same communities. So there is something for almost every price point. If you look at condos or townhomes in those areas, you can find them for the low 300s, if not high 200s also. It just really depends on what your lifestyle is. So keep that in mind. And the greater Tampa Bay area has a lot of different lifestyles to offer. But when it comes to cost of living, you know, our groceries from our experience have definitely been more since we moved from Detroit to here. We just had friends in this week. She said that she was at Publix and she whatever cereal she was looking at buying was seven dollars a box at Publix and they pay apparently like 550 where they're from back home in the Metro Detroit area so I found that fascinating a dollar fifty more for for cereal but we don't eat cereal so I I don't know and um we usually have eggs in every day. So uh, forgive me on that, but I'm just trying to share my experience. I know for a fact that my wife says that we pay way more for groceries here than we did back home. Um, our homeowner's insurance, which people tell you is outrageous, I pay less than $2,500 a year. I know people think I'm full of crap. I've showed the invoice before. Um, so that is real. It just depends on what you're trying to do. Those areas that I was just telling you about up in uh, San Antonio and um, in Wesley Chapel, there are new construction homes that have insurance policies as low as $1,200. I don't sell insurance, I'm just sharing with you. If you wanna buy a home on the coast, um, those things are very hard to get insured. It wouldn't be anything to see a insurance policy at $10,000 a year. So keep that in mind. It is gonna be um, property specific, flood zone, those types of things. Um, our electricity, I will say, costs us more. I can feel that. Our um, auto insurance costs more, but we don't pay a state income tax. And that is important for some people, especially high income earners. That, make, that means a lot. Um, there's no estate tax here, which is also great. Um, the uh, uh, the sales tax, I think, is more than fair. I think we're paying right around 7% in Tampa. It's different per city, um, but to not have an income tax, state income tax, that stuff matters. And it's very business friendly. So keep that in mind. A lot of business owners love to move to the state of Florida um, because they find it very favorable. This is going to all revolve around what your lifestyle is, what you're trying to accomplish when it comes to the cost of living. This next question is one that's been coming up more recently. Is Tampa over? crowded? Uh, and that's a great question. And this is going to be very specific to the individual. Some people want to live in the rural area and they have the idea that they're going to be able to get um, Gulf front property and have two or three acres and enjoy their life with little bother from anybody else around them. And you know what? God bless you. I, 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 that would be amazing. However, that is not the reality here. Um, can that happen? Sure. Would that cost um, tens of millions of dollars in order for me, that to happen, absolutely. <laughs> so that is not a reality of living here in the greater Tampa Bay area. Are there other areas in the country you may be able to do that? Sure, maybe up in the Panhandle or um, you know Alabama, maybe there's some areas like that, but you can't do that here in Tampa. So that's the first thing I want you to wrap your mind around. Pinellas County, where Clearwater and St. Pete is, we have one of the highest population densities in the entire state. Most people don't know that, so keep that in perspective. Um, in Tampa, Tampa proper, obviously, you know, 400,000 people in that area, uh, give or take. There's a lot of individuals that live there. It's a big little city. If you want more rural, more um, suburbs, you have to sneak out, you know, go north. You're going to be, you know, San Antonio and north for that rural feel. Um, you got to start heading further east in between like Plant City and Lakeland. Um, so if that's your vibe, just know you're going to have to go out a ways. Um, but if you're okay with, you know, having a, um, 
I won't call it a thriving metropolis, but it is. We're three and a half million people in the greater Tampa Bay area. There, there are a lot of humans here, um, but I don't find it overwhelming. During season, when, um, and what season is, is uh, that is when a lot of tourists come to the area, typically spring break, Easter. We have a lot of visitors at that time. I think it's awesome. You know, again, I was one of those people. We brought money to the area. Our economy thrives because of those things. So I don't look at it as a negative. Can it be frustrating at times because the roads are uh, have more people on them? Yes. Um, but is it a negative? I don't think so. This is really gonna be about how you feel about things. So just know, even though that this is one of those laid back flip flop lifestyle areas, you're going to be sharing that experience with a lot of other people. And the last question that comes in that top three category that we're referring to is about jobs here in the greater Tampa Bay area. And um, Tampa has been exploding in popularity, but it has also been growing like crazy in terms of jobs. We were just recognized as the fourth most popular destination for employment, um, which is awesome. Awesome. that was right out of Forbes magazine um, depending on what you read we're the second most popular destination for tech in the country behind Salt Lake um, so finance tech and um, medical are really driving that we also have defense contractors in, here in the area and of course education with the university system and schools um, we are <laughs> we are at a deficit we need teachers we need nurses and with the Moffitt cancer research facility that's about to break ground um, they're hiring a lot of researchers and of course medical staff to accompany that also. So um, this is really going to depend on what field you're in. I see a lot of cybersecurity and software in the area. Cybersecurity seems to be the number one thing that I see growing currently. It's not my field of expertise, so please don't let me um, be your guiding light in that. But I'm just sharing with you from our experience with clients relocating to the area what we're seeing. We're typically seeing people who are working professionals in either software or sales. Uh, they are in medical, they are in education, and this is really what is driving um, the growth here in the greater Tampa Bay area. And I mean, it's showing up strong, y'all. We have done a really good job here of attracting not only um, seasoned professionals, but you know, young graduates. Tampa is a very young city. If you didn't know, um, it is 36 years of age on average. That is a young city. When people think Florida, most of the time they're thinking retired but that is not the case in, in Tampa proper. So keep that in mind. There is something for every single working professional in this area here. I think you're going to love it. If you guys have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out to me and the team. Again, all of my contact information is listed down below. There's even a link to my calendar. Jump in that comment section. Let us know what questions you have. Happy to answer that. YouTube is going to put two more videos up here that it absolutely thinks you're going to love and it will help you make that decision also. And until next time, as always, go out and live that Tampa life.